Rez Church Online. My name is Sarah, and on behalf of our lead pastors, Jonathan and Amy Wiggins, thank you for joining us today. Wherever you are connecting with us from, we want you to know that you are loved, and we're so glad that you've joined with us today. Rez Church exists to help people know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. No matter where you are in that journey, we would love the opportunity to walk alongside you. Follow the Connect link in the description of this video and a team member will reach out with next steps on how you can get connected. We have begun phase one of our reopening strategy by offering in-person services at our Crossroads and Greeley campuses. Three service times are offered and county guidelines will be followed to provide a safe and sanitary experience for you and your family. While we will not have childcare, children five and older are welcome to attend the service with their family. For more information on in-person service times and locations, visit our website at res.church. If you have kids watching with you today, our amazing kids team has created a brand new worship experience just for them. You can find a link to our kids experience in the description of this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video with your friends and family on social media to help us spread a message of love, joy, peace, and hope to a world that is desperate for it. In a few moments, we are going to worship together and be encouraged by a powerful message from Associate Lead Pastor Sethry Connor. But first, we want to take a moment to recognize and thank hundreds of volunteers for your incredible efforts during Serve Week. You made the dream a reality by selflessly serving our local communities with your time, energy, love, and resources. Check out this Serve Week recap video.
So come now, Lord, like never before. You're seated on a throne of mercy. Your glory shining. says, Peace I leave with you. 
my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Later in Philippians, it talks about a peace from God that surpasses all understanding, or in other words, a peace that just doesn't make sense. No one is like our God. Nothing can stand against our God. No one else can give what our God can and wants to give. My prayer for us today, for anyone watching this, is that you would experience a peace like you never have before. The kind of peace that, that just doesn't make sense based on what you're experiencing in life, reading on social media, or even just hearing in the news. But when you consider the source of the peace, when you consider that it's from our God, it makes perfect sense. I pray that our hearts, minds, and mouths would be guarded by peace in Jesus' name. If you have a specific prayer need, let us know at res.church prayer. Our prayer team is standing by and would love to pray with you. Rez, thank you for your generosity. Your giving has made it possible for us to meet the physical and spiritual needs of our community in tangible ways. There is never any pressure for you to give at Rez, but for those of you who would like to continue or begin to partner with us through generosity, we want to give you that opportunity today. You can follow the giving link in the description or send a text to the number 77977 with the word res, which will allow you to give securely online through PushPay. Let's continue to worship as we give today.
sacrifice Use me how you want to, God Have your throne within my heart This is my command. Love each other just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. I don't call you servants any longer because servants don't know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends because everything I heard from my father, I have made known to you. What is up, everybody? Hey. Great to see you. Thanks for being oh. here. You guys that are joining us online, thanks for hanging out with us with Res Church Online. I hope that this has been a blessing to you. I love church online. I've loved when my family gets to gather in our living room and worship together and, man, stay in my jammies. I don't know what you call them as adults, but I just said jammies <laughs> as an adult. Um, <laughs> if you guys don't know me, my name is Seth Ree. I serve as an associate lead pastor here at Res, it is such a blessing. Um, my wife of almost 14 years, we're gonna have our anniversary just next week, 14 years, and she is pregnant with our fourth child. So just a few weeks after that, we will be at baby number four, and there will not be a baby number five. Well, baby number five will be a grandchild in a long time. So um, anyway, I wanna just continue this, this series. Uh, I call you my friends, and this is so important, I think, for us as we walk through lives, especially in this season, I think yeah, there's yeah. such a disconnect um, just, just in our relationships. I think a lot of people feel much more isolated than we've been used to feeling, yeah. and this is so important. I actually was just, um, just last week, we have a big Marco Polo group. It's really, it's really a small group that we have with a group of guys, and we just took um, may, maybe a few hours and, and just each guy just individually just was encouraging each other. We were just, um, you know, sometimes we're just telling jokes and goofing around. Sometimes we're really encouraging each other, sharing a scripture, praying for each other. And I, and I just had this, this, this moment where I was like, this is helping me get through this time. Like this kind of relational uh, intentionality, this kind of love is, is so important right now. Having those relationships that matter the most um, be functioning at their highest level right now is crucial for you in your marriages, in your friendships, and the relationship you have with your kids. That will make the difference of how you feel in a season, especially like this where there's so much pressure. So that's why we're jumping into this series. I hope you guys are taking notes. And it's progressive. This isn't just like kind of jump into one. Hopefully you guys will watch all of these. Uh, if you missed Pastor Jonathan's from last week, uh, he kind of laid out the blueprint for this series. Uh, he started with Relate. Uh, he talked about who are you walking with? That was the question that he had. Who are you walking with in your life? And really any relationship starts with just spending some time together, just finding ways to connect, uh, having a great time with each other, doing some fun stuff. You know, just, uh, I think we undervalue fun things sometimes, just hanging out and, you know, going to Top Golf, telling some jokes, just getting in the car together, grabbing coffee together, um, you know, having board game nights at your house, whatever it is like that. Those those things matter so much. And that's the first step is just who are you walking with and, and put people in your life, walk alongside people in your life uh, that, that are important to you, that you know you can learn something from. Um, Pastor Jonathan is not here with us this week because he actually is able to share this uh, with another church, with another church in Texas, because this isn't just something that's great for you and I. This is something that uh, marriages need right now. Pastors need it. He's able to go and, and share this with pastors. Um, so he's out able to do that in Texas, ministering the same thing, encouraging their church with it. 
Um, and something that I'm super excited about is that Pastor Jonathan's pastor, Greg Surratt, who spent a few weeks with us this summer, um, actually asked Jonathan, he recognizes uh, what a powerful principle this is. He recognizes that Jonathan has found just this process, which you guys are looking at right now, to be so effective. He hasn't seen it in other places um, that he visits, and he visits a lot of places. He's influential in a lot of churches. And he asked Jonathan, he said, you need to write a book about this, that so we can get this out and share this with as many people as possible. So that's such an awesome opportunity that we're talking about. Your pastor and my pastor are sharing something that our country um, is about to experience because that's what we need right now is this depth of relationships. So just to jump back in again, um, relate, trust, disclose, process, integrate. Those are five intentional steps and that is what the blueprint for this series is. So last week, relate. This week, we're gonna talk about trust and sharing our story. Next week, you'll hear about disclosure and confession, going on to processing those things, and then integrating, living an integrated life, uh, which is so, so important. And listen, this is a process. This is not just a like, you know what I like? I like this one. I'm just gonna, I'm just a discloser. And I've, you've probably met a discloser in your life that's just like, hi, what's your name? Here's the worst thing I've ever thought. And it's like, not ready. Let's relate a little bit. I don't trust you yet. Um, that happens sometimes. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie Sleepless in Seattle. It's one of my wife's favorite movies. And one of the funniest parts in it is this woman gets on a plane and she's racked with guilt and she sits down in this middle seat and the lady next to her, just to make very casual, light conversations, like, don't you just hate flying? And she's like, oh yes, and I just told the worst one to the man that I'm about to marry. Do you believe that any lie is a betrayal? And the lady's like, I, I said flying. She's like, um, yeah, yeah, you know, it's like, I think some people just are like, this is what I do, I just gotta get some stuff off my chest, but go through this process. Recognize that this is actually a process that you can own in any valuable relationship that's in your life. And don't stop either, because I think what happens with some people are like, you know, relating is good enough for me. I just want to keep it light. Let's hang out. Let's tell some jokes, but that's all the more that I want. I'm telling you, if you guys will walk through this process, if you'll take the next couple of weeks and be intentional to say, I want to learn how to grow in my relationships. I want to learn how I can do better, how I can be more of the person God's called me to be in my own life and for the, for the people that God's placed in my life that I love. There's such a blessing in that. So don't miss um, that opportunity. Um, I just want to pray for a minute because this is so powerful and I think we should pray. So God, I do thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity to learn from you. I pray, Father, for the people that are here right now, for the people that are watching online. I pray that every relationship in our life would be strengthened, would be, would be more rich, Father, would be closer. And God, that we would be closer to you and closer to other people in our life. And I thank you for this time that that's your plan for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, so when I was in college, uh, I worked at this place called the Belo Mansion. It was an old, super cool mansion in Dallas that they converted to an event center uh, that they'd have really fancy weddings at and big parties at. I worked there with my wife. I had a couple of friends that worked there. And, uh, and the first day that we were there, it was, it was kind of a, like it looked all fancy, like Gary Kelly, the, the CEO of Southwest, Southwest, his daughter got married there. It was like the most expensive wedding I've ever seen. It was crazy, beautiful and elegant and all these amazing things. But if you went back into the kitchen, it was nuts. Like it was crazy. So this is like the first time I've ever worked. I had never worked like in a restaurant or any environment like this. So like the first day I was working there, me and, and this friend of mine, we walked back to the kitchen. And I was like, this kind of reminds me of my grandma's kitchen, except for it, it smells like mushrooms and everyone looks like they want to hurt me. Um, like the, the, the chefs are all yelling at each other, you know, there's flames and people are running back and forth and bumping into you and there's lots of cuss words, so many cuss words that are happening in that place. And I, so it's a little intimidating. And this one guy that was kind of like one of, our, one of our bosses, he comes up to me and this other friend of mine is like, here, I need you guys to cut some limes. And by some, he meant like a hundred. There were so many limes. Um, and he sets down a cutting board in front of both of us, and like a machete, this knife was very sharp, and all these limes like cut them, and we're like, okay, so we just kind of like, uh, and we kind of start cutting, and I'm, and I'm cutting, and kind of like, I don't cut limes, like I didn't think I got hired to cut limes, but that's what I found myself doing, was cutting limes. So we're cutting there, and I look over at my friend, and he's like not cutting anymore, he's just freezing, like he's stuck, and then he goes like this, and he shows me, and he cut the heck out of his thumb like on the, his first on his first attempt 
And then the guy who told us to cut the limes walks by and he's like, what are you doing? Why aren't you cutting the limes? He's like, ha ha ha. And he's like, so he's actively just squeezing lime juice into this huge open wound that he has in his finger. And he's just like, <laughs> and he just keeps doing it. And just, he's like, I'm fine, I'm fine. You know, just, and, and as soon as the guy walked away, he just ran and you know, tended to his wound and reattached his thumb or whatever was going on. But I think there's these moments that we just, we live our life like that. We're just saying, I'm fine. Everything's fine. Like I, I just cut in to my thumb. Lime juice is actively pouring into it. But I got to look good for the guy that hired me. I have it all together. What an idiot I would look like if I said I didn't know how to cut limes. You know, I want to grow in this Below Mansion corporation that I'm now a part of. And I want to climb the corporate ladder. I can't expose those weaknesses. And I think we all have different reasons why we might just say, I'm fine. When someone comes up, how are you doing? I'm fine. Fine. Yeah. I'm fine. In your small group, hey, let's go around. Does anybody need perfect? No, I'm good. I'm right. fine. Right. Totally good. Totally great. And maybe you might just say, well, I'm, I'm a private person. I don't really like to tell people when things are happening in my life. Or maybe, maybe you're just a really strong person. You're like, I got this. I can handle something. I don't need to talk to people about this. I'm fine. Like, I'm, I can get through this. It's, yeah. I don't need other people. I'm a, tough, I'm a tough person. Maybe you've had past experience where some of your vulnerability, maybe you've chosen to trust people, maybe you told them, you've chosen to say, here's some things going on in my life and it's hurt you. It's come back to you like, I don't do that. I, I, don't, I don't trust people. I'm not going to tell them what's up. Or maybe you're just, you know, cutting limes and you're concerned about the perception you're putting out. Like, so, well, if I told people what's going on, you know, then, then they might think this of me. They might not respect me enough. They might not, you know, like those are all traps we can get caught in that keep us from being able to take steps of trust in our life, which is what God's best for you is. That is what God's best for your life is. But whether it's perception control, whether it's because you think you're tough enough, any of those things will keep you from God's best. And it reminds me of this. This is a hilarious house um, in my parents-in-law, uh, in their neighborhood, that I always just, like whenever we'd visit them, I'd drive by and just laugh. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but this is literally, there's a house back here that they just built a slightly better looking house in front of. It's literally just a facade. This is not what their house looks like. The real house is back there, and they're like, that house is kind of ugly. Let's build a beautiful pink house in front of it that people will see. You know, like here, look at this other angle of it. It's like, that's the actual house, and here's what we want people to see. This is our curb appeal. Now, if you're ever going to make the decision to do this, hopefully you have better taste than these people as well. Um, but that is how our lives are lived. Yeah, wow. It's like, wow. I have some stuff going on inside. I have some stuff, man, like I have had such a hard week. I've had such a hard year. Like, man, I'm going through some stuff. But no, no, no. But see, when, when the people just come by, and I think that's maybe what relating is. Like, hey, relating, you can kind of walk by my sidewalk. You can, I'll come out to my front door and I'll greet you and we'll talk to you there. But you can't step in wow, right. to my house. I don't want you to see what's behind this. Right. There's something here that I don't want to do. Because I think... I'm just going to make an assumption that these people knew, hey, we got some problems in our house, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be too much of an investment for us to actually fix wow. them. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little bit more than we're willing to pay so to actually take care of all this. So let's just kind of put something up front because really trust is an investment. This isn't just something like, this isn't just something you can say, yeah, it's easy. I just trust people. You have to choose to make the investment of trust in people. It's not easy to invest. There's, there's a cost-benefit analysis that I think we all make in our head throughout life. I literally think if you were to look inside my brain, everything is just doing some kind of an equation of a cost-benefit analysis. Is it worth me telling this person this because that could mean this to me later? If that person hurts me, then I'm going to regret this. If that person changes their opinion of me, then I'm going to be like, I shouldn't have done that. Bad idea. Trusting wasn't worth it. So we can get ourselves all bound up because we're actually starting to look at this in a way that's not actually representing the truth of what that benefits in our life and what that trust means. All we're looking at is, nope, risk. I'm going to feel exposed. I'm going to look stupid. People could use this to hurt me. I'm not doing that. And a lot of people have just made the decision to say, I don't trust people. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to open up. I just don't do that. I don't need that. It's an investment that you have to choose to make. And I think when we can look at the relationships of Jesus in the Bible, I want you to think about this. Jesus invested in people, right? We know that Jesus had these guys. He walked alongside every day. He invested in them. He loved them dearly. They had intimate relationship and friendship with each other 
But Jesus knew one of these guys will betray me. I will be hurt like no one has ever hurt me before. Right. Not only like physically dying on the cross, but I mean the emotional pain for Jesus to have one of his best friends betray him to death. Yeah. That's intense. Yeah. And even with that, Jesus decided it is still worth me risking that moment, that pain, because it's worth it to live in relationship with these people, to pour into them and to experience that kind of love with them. It's worth it. So Jesus made that. So today, we're going to focus on one of those stories from the Bible. So every week, we're going to focus on a different story to really give you clarity on those different steps of relate, trust, disclose, process, integrate. So for trust, I think one of the best stories that we can talk about regarding trust is the life uh, or the relationship of Jesus and Peter. So I want to pick this up. So here's, here's where we are in, in the story. And it's a story that I'm sure you all have heard a lot of times. Jesus and his disciples had just fed the 5,000. So an amazing miracle, a great connection with each other. Uh, Jesus told them to go ahead and cross the lake. So their next you know, destination was on the other side of this enormous lake. You guys go ahead. Jesus withdrew for a little bit because occasionally there are the right times to say, I do just need a moment alone. I do need to take a moment just to connect with God to kind of, you know, get back to the most important relationship in my life, focus on that, and then I'm going to reconnect with my friends later. So he sent them off in the boat, and I don't actually know what his plan was because he didn't have a boat of his own. Um, They all came together. So that's happened to probably some of you. You're like, well, I'll ride to the restaurant together. Just drop me off. And you're like, oh. My friends are gone and I don't have a car now. Um, So maybe that's what happened to Jesus. Maybe he just forgot. Um, He probably didn't. He was Jesus. But let's just, you know, try to recognize his humanity for a second. So Jesus gets done praying. He gets to the edge of the lake. There's no boat. He's like, well, I guess I'm going to walk across the lake. Why walk around it? That would take way longer. Much more direct to walk across. So Jesus starts walking across the lake. So that's where this story, uh, where we're going to pick this up in the book of Matthew, chapter 14, starting in verse 24, it says this. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, It's a ghost! But Jesus spoke to them at once, Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said, which this moment is actually really hilarious to me um, because Peter's saying, if it's you, tell me to come. That does remind me of that part in Elf where he's just like, if you're really Santa, what song did I sing to you on my birthday? He's like, happy birthday, of course. He's like, oh, shit. (laughs) It's like, Peter maybe could have thought of a better question, but that's that's the way it goes. Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. So I think this is a story that we have all heard before. This is something that even even people outside of the the church are familiar with the story of Peter walking on water. But what is most often focused on was was Peter sinking, right? So we know that after this, he stepped out, he tried his best, poor guy couldn't walk on water, he sank, oh, ye of little faith, those moments. But I wanna focus on something something else, which is that this story is really, it's a picture of trust, right? Um, the disciples, they were going through a storm and they were in trouble. Despite that, they could have said, we're fine. We're going to make it through this thing. We're sailors. We've got this. I mean, it's a little bit wind, but you know, we're fine. We're going we're gonna to make it. We're going to make it through them. We've been in these kind of moments before. We can handle it. We can get through. So I can see the disciples just being like, we're good. And, and actually what's interesting, the same story in a different gospel. So in the gospel of Mark, It says about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them walking on the water. He intended to go past them. So he's actually like, I'm, you know, you guys are in your boat. You're good. Apparently you're fine. I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm fine too. We're just going to keep moving. So the, the, the idea was like, they're not actually going to die. Jesus wasn't out there on a rescue mission. Jesus didn't come running to their aid because they were about to die. He actually had planned to walk past them. They were fine. Right. But something changed in that moment. Something changed for Peter because he just realized, hey, I'm fine. We're all fine. Maybe we can make it through this. But Peter had to make a choice to not settle for just survival. It's not just good enough to say, I can make it through. I'm tough enough to do this on my own. There's something better than that. I don't want to just settle for survival. And I don't want you to settle for survival in your life. There's something more than just saying, I'm tough enough to take this. I can handle this by myself. Man, God surrounded you with people who love you and are in relationship with you. Don't decide, I'm just going to fight these waves by myself. You know, it's a little crazy, but I'm good. 
I've got this thing. There's something better than just that. So let's go back to this. This is what Jesus said. He said, he spoke to them and said, don't be afraid. Take courage because I'm here. He's saying, you don't have to go through this alone. You don't have to live in fear. You don't have to just be that person that toughs it out. You can take courage because someone who's got your back is here. Someone that cares about you is here. And then we go back to where Peter said, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you. But listen, I think there's a lot more to it than that. I don't think it's just because Peter was asking a stupid question. Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come. I think Peter knew he was about to take a risk. I think Peter knew this is a risk that I'm being confronted with here, and I'm not ready just to jump out yet. I need a little more. Jesus, like, give me something. Jesus, are you there for me? Do you have me? Is this going to be okay? Yeah. Jesus, just, just tell me. Tell me that, that you can do this. Tell me you're there for me. And Jesus said, yes, come. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. So because Peter was able to say, hey, this is my friend out here. He says he's got me. He, he says this is going to be okay. I'm willing to step out of something that's relative to the options available, relative to being in the boat or standing on top of water that was a less safe choice, right? He took a risk because his friend was there for him, because someone who he trusted was there, someone that he had been doing life with. You know, we talk about relate, and that leads into trusting. Jesus and Peter had spent time together so that when Peter heard him say, come, he knew this is my friend. This is someone who I've walked alongside with. This is someone who I can step out. So, so Peter not only decided I'm not just going to settle for survival, he also said I'm also not just going to settle for being safe. So being wow. safe isn't the only goal that I have in my life. Yeah. I'm going to take a risk because someone out there sees something that I don't see. Wow. Okay. It wasn't a sin to stay in the boat. That's right. There was nothing wrong with staying in the boat. It, it's not like Jesus was saying, if you guys don't get out, you know, this is a big thing. It wasn't like the 11th commandment we never heard about was staying in the boat. Yeah. That was fine. It was fine. It wasn't a sin. It was safe. But Peter decided there's still something better. I see someone who loves me. I'm going to choose to step out. Look at this quote. It's gonna, it, it blows my mind. It says, in this world, there was nothing scarier than trusting someone, but there was also nothing more rewarding. It is scary. It is a risk to say, I'm going to, I'm going to try this. I'm going to step out. I'm going to trust someone. I'm going to, I'm going to take that step. But there's nothing more rewarding that you can experience in your life, but when you start to take those steps in those relationships that you value in your life, because trust is courageous. It takes courage to trust. Trust isn't a side, a sign of weakness. I think some people think, well, I don't trust people. I'm not vulnerable with people because I'm strong. I think this is a, especially a problem for men. Like, I don't need to talk to people about my problems. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not weak. I don't need that. Trust and vulnerability are not a sign of weakness. That is a courageous act that you can strategically use in your life to say, I want to be a better man. I want to be a better person. I'm speaking to men right now specifically because I think it's harder for them. I do want to be better. I want to be a better friend than I could have been. I want to be a better husband than I could have been. I want to be a better dad than I could have been. So I'm going to courageously step out into something that is scary. I'm not staying back here because I'm so tough. I'm taking a step forward because I do have the courage to do something right. that challenges me, yeah. and it's hard. Yeah. The choice to trust is a, is a choice of courage. So I want to challenge you with something today, which is to choose trust right. in your life. Yeah. Choose it in the way that you choose to say, I will, I'm going to trust some people even though it's risky, and choose to be trustworthy yeah. in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Choose to be someone that other people can trust you when they open up to you, when they talk to you, that you're trustworthy. Yeah, that's great. Be available to other people. Make the decision to trust and be a trustworthy person in your life. Peter needed that invitation, right? Yeah. Peter, Peter knew there was something better, but he still needed that moment of saying, but I, I'm not quite ready. I don't know if I can do this. And he needed that person that was out there holding his hand saying, you can do this and I'm here for you. Because I don't think that Peter just decided to walk on water because he was looking for a thrill. I don't think it was like a bucket list item. I think that he saw a friend who saw his situation from a different perspective. Wow. Jesus walked by and saw that Peter was in a storm, and Peter thought, you know, maybe Jesus sees something that I don't see because he seems to be okay, and I'm not okay right now. So Peter made that choice to step out, to choose trust 
in that moment because he saw my friend offers something better to me. This is someone that I can trust. We've been walking together. This is someone that if he's saying this is okay, I trust that it's going to be okay. We make a lot of Peter sinking, but he was the only person who stepped out of the boat. Yeah. Everyone else was content with fine. Yeah. Everyone, everyone else was content to say, well, we'll figure this out. We got this. We can do this. Like, I'm not doing that. I'm not stepping out. Like, I'm going to be fine yeah. right here. Right. Choosing to step out is why we can absolutely look at Peter in the story as someone who did something courageous, yeah. did something awesome, but he needed that invitation from Jesus to say, I got you. Yeah, so this is going to be okay. So in this application, I think one of the easiest ways for you to think about what trust means is that trust is telling your story. That's what trust is. When you're in a relationship with people, that's telling your story. It's starting to open up. It's saying that, hey, you can, uh, in, in, uh, in ugly house world, it's saying, hey, you can come past the threshold of the facade that most people see, and you can actually take a step, and you can actually look in my house and say, hey, this, this is actually the house that I have. This is actually the way that we decorate our house. You know, it is, it is a little messy over here and I, I didn't have a chance to clean that up yet. This, this actually is what my house looks like. I know you've seen this, but I'm willing to let you take a step past that because trust is telling your story. It's inviting someone into that house and saying, hey, this, this is actually what the inside of my house is like. It's, it's a little bit messy over there. Like I didn't have time to, to clean that up. I didn't have time to work on that. And, it, and inviting someone else is actually like a, a moment that you can be like, Oh, like someone, someone saw the inside. I don't have to just try to keep maintaining this thing because it, it's exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. It's not God's best for your life. Right. So invite people to tell you their stories. Invite that. And maybe people will come and they'll start and be like, well, I was born on a cold night in December. And, you know, it's just like, okay, well, we're <laughs> starting back there. Yeah. Or maybe they're going to say, hey, 2020 has been really challenging for me. Right. And they're just going to go through some, some, some things they've experienced this year. Yeah. Maybe they're just going to say, this week has really kicked my butt. This has been hard and walk through that. Wherever they're at, what they're doing is they're just choosing to say, hey, here's some things that, that I've been kind of guarding, that I've been trying to, be, to, to tough my way through, that I've been trying to say I'm fine, that I didn't want people to see, but I actually, it'll be helpful if I can show that to somebody. So who needs to hear your story? Because there are, there are for every single one of you, there is a story. There's a story of what happened this week. There's a story of what you have gone through this year. You have a story in your life that actually other people need to hear. That's something that I actually struggled with for a long time. I just thought, I don't have an interesting story. I don't have a story to tell. No, nobody's interested in, in what I have to say. That can be uniquely difficult again. That can be hard for guys. Like, ah, oh, whatever, yeah, so I was born, and then I got married, and I went to college, and here I am today. You know, it's like, but, but actually taking time to say, these are the things that make me who I am. Some of the things that I'm facing right now, some of the struggles that I have, I think maybe it's because I've, I've gone through some of these things. This has been challenging. I don't really know what to do right. about that. Yeah. Starting to open that up, it is a strategic strength to say, I want to tell my story, and you have a story to tell. When you're sitting down with the people that love, do you understand that you are a gift to the people that love you? You're a gift to them. And when you choose to say, I want to open up and just, and just, just let you see a little bit more of who I am, you're just making that gift just more beautiful to say, this is, this is what I have, this is who I am. Yeah. Choose to do that. And then who can you invite to tell their story? Who are the people in your life that just are looking for that invitation, that are just looking for that extended hand to say, hey, I'm here for you. Like, you can trust me. What's going on in your life? How are you doing? So I want you to jump back into the story with me and look at one more point that I want to share with you. It says, when they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the son of God, they exclaimed. Now listen, all the disciples were not the ones who stepped out in that moment. Peter is the one who got out of the boat. Yeah, sure. Peter is the one who took the step of courage. Peter is the one who risked trust in a relationship. But that relationship and that step of trust benefited all of the people closest to Peter in his life. Peter's move, Peter's trust, Peter's courage was not just for him. It was for the people in his life. Courageous steps of trust in one relationship benefit surrounding relationships. As you take steps to say, man, I really just want to, to be closer to my wife. I really need to just talk about some things and I haven't been really open. You're gonna find yourself being a better employee. When you, when you start to, to connect with a friend on a new level and just say, this is what I'm going on, I'm struggling with this, you're gonna find yourself being a better parent. Because when you take these steps, it's not just in that one isolated situation that it's benefiting. It actually is giving you a holistic step of growth and connection in your life. You're opening up your heart in a new way that is God's best for your life. 
that vulnerability, that leads to the things that we want in life. It leads to love. It leads to belonging. It leads to joy and to courage and to empathy and, and creativity. And all these things actually start when we just say, hey, I'm just going to keep opening my heart. I'm just going to keep taking steps yeah. towards opening my heart, not withdrawing, not stepping away, not saying I'm good, I'm fine, but taking steps of courage to say, I will trust. Even in the business world, people have recognized the power of in business relationships saying it's actually better to be vulnerable. The whole don't let them see you sweat, play it close to the chest. All of that is actually being dispelled even in the wow. business world saying if you want to have successful business relationships, yeah. learn to be vulnerable and yeah, open with people. Great. Just connect. Awesome. We want this for every person who calls Res home. We want this for you. And especially during the season, we have to be creative of how to do it. But you need relationships in your life. When we talk about small groups. It's not just because that's the thing that we do at the church or that we want to have a lot of them. We talk about them because this is the best way that we can say, here's an opportunity to start relating to people. You can start to relate. You can hang out. You can tell some jokes. My small group is a running group. We go running together. And through that process, you start to build trust. You start to connect with each, with each other. You start to hear each other's stories. We go running in my group, but every week we get to hear, hey, how are you doing? What's going on in your life? There's been a few times that maybe just one or two of the guys that go running with me afterwards will sit and talk longer, and they really just open up and say, hey, this is my story. This is who I am, and it's amazing what it does just to connect us, to connect us with each other. It's amazing what it does to know I have people in my life. I'm a person in someone else's life that can be available to them yeah. because you make those choices to trust. So I want you to look at what we say about small groups because this matters a lot. We say small groups, we, the reason that we have small groups is because life change happens through a process with the right relationships. We want to help you take steps towards the right relationships. We want to help you know what that process is. What does it look like to get connected to somebody? That's what this series is about. And I'm telling you, this is so true in my own life. It is so true that I've needed people to extend that trust to me, that I've needed people to hold out their hands and say, hey, I'm here. Because right. I'm telling you for me, and I'm just, I, I'm just taking a moment to say it's, it's important for me to learn to be vulnerable. Trust is not my easiest go-to thing. Just telling my story, just being open with people about what's going on, that is not just the way that I am. It is a choice that I've made yeah. because it's strategic. It's a choice that I've made because it's better. Because you can look at the risk factors and you can say, well, maybe that person's going to betray me. Maybe I'm going to be embarrassed. Man, it's, there, are, there are conversations that I've had where I'm being really open with someone. And it is. It's, it's humbling. It's a little humiliating sometimes. It feels exposing. That is something that I'm risking. But what are we risking by not doing it? Do that. By not choosing to that. We're risking saying, I don't know if I really want the best life that God has for me. I don't know if I really want the best relationship with my wife that I can have. I don't know if the friends in my life really deserve to see the best of me and for me to invest in them. Wow. I don't know if my kids really deserve the best in that kind of relationship in their life. There is risk either way. So take the risk to say, God's best for me is to choose to trust, choose to be open, choose to take those steps. Because man, when I've chosen to do that, it hasn't been easy, but it's always been worth it. Yeah. The most free that I've felt in my life is because I've chosen to say, hey, here's a little bit more of who I am. Here's a little bit more of what's going on in my life. It's the best thing that you can choose to do and one of the hardest things, but it is worth taking the risk. So good. I just want to close and I just want to give you a few, a few questions that you can ask. Maybe this is with your, with your wife. Maybe it's with your friend. Maybe it's with your kids. I actually just did a trip with my, uh, with my oldest son and he's about to go into middle school. And I didn't want to just, I, I did want to kind of prepare him for here's what it looks like to be a teenager. Here's what the future looks like. I mean, here's a lot of things that might be coming your way. But I didn't want to just sit there and read a book to him. I actually went through this process. I wanted to take time to relate to him. I wanted to take time to build trust with him. I wanted to take time to give him that opportunity to disclose to me, to someone that he trusts, to process those things and to live an integrated life. And that's not just a one-time sit down, let's, ha let's have a three-hour lecture and now you're good, go be an adult. It's the establishment of a relationship that, la that matters to me that will continue throughout my life and it will continue to be a journey of relating and trusting and disclosing and processing and integrating. Yeah. That matters so much. So listen, I just want to give you, before I close, just a few tools, just a few questions that maybe you can ask in your small group, in your marriage, with your kids, with your friends, that I think begin to open up that opportunity to extend that hand of trust. So here's a few questions that you can ask. How are you doing really? This is not the question you ask while you're shaking someone's hand while you're walking past them. This is the question that you say, hey, how are you really doing? 
what's going on in your life? What's a high and a low in your life right now? That's such a great opportunity in a small group setting just to hear, hey, what, what are some great things that are happening? What are some things that are happening that are, that are pretty tough that we can pray about? We can celebrate these things together and we can pray about these things yeah. together. I've heard one person calls them your happies and your crappies. So share your happies and your crappies with someone. <laughs> Tell me your story. That's something that be, be willing to sit there and just listen and be an active listener. Hear the things that they're talking about and then be willing to speak and encourage them. Tell me your story. How's your marriage? Ask your friends, how, how's your marriage? How are you doing? Ask, ask your siblings, the, the people that, are, that you love in your life, how's your marriage? That matters to people and knowing that someone is on their side, knowing that someone is in their corner with them matters. How are your friendships? How are the other relationships in your life? How are you doing? Do you feel like you're connected in your life right now? Do you feel isolated? How's your relationship with God? Do you feel like you're connected with God in your life? And listen, I want you to practice asking and answering these questions honestly. The answer fine is not the right answer. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Everything's good. We're all good. Practice actually saying, you know, it, it could be better. I've actually, we, there was kind of a struggle with this. This has been a challenge for me. So practice asking honest questions, answering honest questions. Take those steps towards trust in your life. It is worth it. Take those steps. Take the risk. It's worth it. Listen, the most important relationship that you can start with in this process is your relationship with God. We're talking about our relationships that we have with each other, but all of those things flow from a healthy relationship that you have with God. And maybe that's something that you haven't started in your life. Maybe that relationship with God is the missing piece, and maybe you're feeling a lot of dysfunction in other places. The place you need to start is that relationship with God. And I want you to know that God is trustworthy, that you can take a step towards God and that God's hand is extended to you right now. So I want to give you that opportunity. If you've never made that decision to follow Jesus, to, to, if you feel like you're not right with God and you want to establish that relationship, I want to pray with you. I just want to invite you right where you're at right now to repeat this prayer after me. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I have sinned and lived life my own way and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In your name, amen. Hope this message has been a blessing to you. If you made that decision and prayed with Pastor Sethry today, we would love to follow up with you to give you next steps. Just follow the link in the description that says, I made the decision to follow Jesus. One of the best steps we can offer, whether you decided to follow Jesus 30 seconds ago or 30 years ago, is a class that we call Growth Track. Growth Track is available on demand and at your own pace. Just follow the link in the description of this video to get started today. The description will also give you links to follow us on social media, visit our website, connect with us, and request prayer. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video, and we'll see you next week for Church Online.